Hello and welcome to this lesson. In this lesson we're looking at the mathematical properties of vectors. Got my S there. Okay, the mathematical properties of vectors. I think easy way to understand why on earth this is the way it is, is to actually consider a man uh, taking a walk. Okay, so this is where he started at point A and he takes a walk, goes around, there he goes, walks, walks, walk eventually get to this position here that's point B and then he starts walking back okay starts walking back a different route doesn't matter how he does it but eventually he gets back to A now let's take different times of his journey so we're going to look at time 1 that's going to be there time 2 Let time 2 be here on that corner okay and then at time three, he's, he's at point B. And now you remember that it, we're just going to look at displacement for now, but it's the same for all other vectors. Okay, so if we have a look at this man's displacement between time zero, okay, when he started his journey, there's time zero, when he started his journey, and time one. Okay, so let's uh, draw an arrow in there. Okay, there you go. Draw an arrow from here to there. There we go. That's his. That's his displacement. Let's call this one S one. Okay, his displacement is one. Okay, then from. Time 1 to time 2 is his second displacement. Okay, so drawing in that vector, there we go. There's another vector, and we're going to call that one S2. S2. Since they're vectors, they need little arrows on top, or just bars on top. But there's the arrow. And now one more, okay, one more vector from time 2 to time 3. There's a third vector, and we'll call that one S3. Okay, now you see a very interesting thing that if I put all of these vectors head to tail, you see, there's that vector's head against that vector's, well, let's just call it his tail. Okay, there's another one. The resultant vector, that's what we call the vector that uh, connecting the beginning and the end, kind of. So that this is the resultant vector. Let me make it in a light blue. Okay, there's the resultant vector. Is right there. That's simply his displacement between point A and point B. And we get this resultant vector, and let's call it... S R S R. It can also be called the net the net vector. Okay, we'll call it S R for the resultant vector is by placing all of these vectors head to tail and then just connecting the beginning or the first one's tail to the last one's head. And it's also the direction. Now, there's a bunch of other mathematical properties, or uh, if, if we look at the mathematics behind this, it's quite intense. Um, not really, but it, there's actually a mathematical way of doing this. I've done it graphic, graphically, but there's also an algebraic way of doing it. But for the purposes of uh, this course, it's good enough for you to understand that putting vectors head to tail will help you find, will, or will actually give you the result in vector. So this is how we define vector addition. Okay, so vector addition. If we add S1 plus S2 plus S3, okay, we find the resultant vector. And one way of doing it is simply putting them head to tail. See you in the next video.